This episode of Jack is brought to you by Weaver Leather. So I've already got an idea of who Jack is from chasing him around and watching him run around. But now I'm going to start to find out a little bit more uh, how he interacts with people. So I need him to respect my space, number one. So number one, if he starts to get in my space, this stick and string is going to help me keep my bubble. And that means I don't want him inside this four foot zone. I might actually keep him back six, eight, ten feet. I would rather have him too far back than on top of me because he's big and I'm squishy. I don't want to be squished. So. Right now we can see that he's just exhibiting, he's bored, he wishes he were in control of the situation, he's like, come on, get with it, what does this mean? He's just, there's sort of that teenage frustration, what's going on? He, it's not mean, he's not being mean, he's not being aggressive, he's just kind of like, get me out of this classroom, I want to go somewhere, this is boring, only he's doing it all, he doesn't vocalize it with his words all the time, he does it with his body language, because horses speak in body language. The stick and string is going to be an extension of my hand. So it's interesting when you see me move it around, it's interesting to see that he is reacting to it. And he's having a good reaction, which is he's moving backwards. Because again, I want to keep us both safe. So as he goes backwards, I'm fine with that. We're both safer at that distance. I'm 99% sure that he's not been lunged before, which is one of the reasons he hasn't done what a lot of older broke horses do, which is take off lunging themselves around you. So he doesn't really know what that's all about. He's blown off a little bit of energy, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and just start kind of communicating with him. So I'm going to move around. He's watching me with his head and neck. He's kind of interested in following me. If he gets too close, I can raise that up. I like that he's he's really curious, but he's respectful. So when I pick my hand up like that, he backs off. And for a two-year-old stallion, that's really good. The licking and chewing makes me think about Roxy even more because everybody who's ever seen the videos when I'm riding her, was riding her bareback and bridleless, was that she just was licking and chewing and licking and chewing. And it's really hard for me because he looks a lot like her. And so it's not, not easy. But there he's kind of scared because he's reacting to the um, stick and string. So even though I'm saying this is an extension of my body, this is not normal for people in his world it's not normal for people to carry this. So it'll take him a while for this to become normal, which is another reason why you should carry it often with the horses you're gonna to need to use it on. When people say their horse is scared of a whip, horses aren't naturally just plain scared of whips. I mean, he's obviously scared because this is a strange object, but this could be a saddle pad and he would be just as scared. What's going on here is he doesn't understand what it's gonna be used for. And if as the handler, you always hit him with it, it won't take him very long to figure out this is the hitting tool. So he needs to understand this tool is an extension of my body. So the first few things that I'll do with it will be um, more quiet type things. And so today I'm just, kind of, I'm just kind of messing with them. I'm not trying to, I'm evaluating him. Yes, you're always training them. So I'm kind of moving around here and taking a read on him. And I'll get him to where I can, can rub this on him, but but basically I'm trying to just show him it's not really a big deal. What I love about the Colts is it's body language, body language, body language. It's reading their body language and they're so animate with it. They're so animated. They, they're like little kids. When, you, when you're in a room of kindergartners, you don't really have to wonder what they're thinking because they say it. They almost don't have a filter. And that's what I love about these young horses is they kind of don't have a filter. He wears his emotions right out there. So if he's, if he's questioning something, if he's unsure about it, you see it. With the older horses, it's just like older people. They start to hide some of their emotions and it gets a little more complex. So right now I have to make the decision how long I'm going to work with Jack. I haven't worked hard to be able to rub him with this, but he's getting more comfortable than just being out here. And this is where I get a, one of my most frequently asked questions is, how long should I work with a horse? And, you know, if you've seen a colt starting competition like the Road to the Horse, then you can see that if you keep their attention, which I have his attention, I have it better now than I did earlier. He's curious, but he's respectful. He's not digging. And so he's, he's, he's interacting with me. I can keep going. 
or I can elect to stop. Basically, since I'm not in an intense situation either way, there is no right answer right now. I could keep going or I could stop. It would become a, wrong, it would become a bad time to start more if, say, dinner were going to burn on the stove in the next 15 minutes, and that would put me under a time pressure to be done. If I don't have pressure to be done, then I can, I can wait. Now, right here, he's getting too close. Remember I talked about that four-foot bubble? He's getting too close. So if this was an older horse, somebody might pick up the stick and string and smack him in the chest. I like my teeth, so I'm not going to because he's been overreacting to the stick and string, so the, I don't want to introduce it at first by just smacking him with it because he'll get more scared. So the first thing I can do is just kind of make my body bigger. So a lot of times I teach people the funky chicken, like, you know, I want my horses to think my elbows might fly around at any moment. It makes them less paranoid because they just know this is really my personal space. And my kids took karate, and this is a really strong elbow move anyway. So he needs to just learn that this is, this is normal for humans to do. You really don't want to be inside this elbow space. On top of that, you'll see him licking and chewing there. That's because he understands horses in the pasture have personal space. They all have different personal space. Some horses have big personal space. Some horses have close. And he just went, oh, this human has this bubble. That's why he's not running crazily away, but he's also, he's respectful. He's like, okay, I'll stay out. In the next episode, count how many times Jack drags Stacy off camera while she begins to teach him how to lunge.